My 10 years of intense drug addiction and subsequent substance misuse were probably caused by my psychedelic drug exploration. Sobriety was the outcome of this addiction's treatment. After my encounters with the police and the challenges that followed, I made the decision to enroll in a rehabilitation program. I am happy with my new life free of drugs, alcohol, and other addictions, and I am appreciative of my recovery. I can accomplish more of my goals in a more calm and peaceful way now that I'm clean and sober. About four years into my recovery, I experienced a dark period during which I felt absolutely lost and hopeless. Despite not using drugs, I experienced a tangible representation of my despair in the form of a heart attack. I was so depressed that I wanted to terminate my life and not be here any longer. My heart did stop beating, even if I did not die. I was out for 25 to 35 minutes, the doctor told me later. During this time, I could see my own body stretched out on the ground. This interaction made it extremely evident to me what happens to us when we die, why we are here, and how everything fits together. The most important lesson I learned was that life is both simple and complex, and we have the ability to make it easy or difficult. Using every aspect of our existence that endures after death, I came into contact with a dazzling light and a powerful energy source that communicated with me. This energy communicated with me a great deal of information. In this state, I communicated with a beautiful, highly intuitive entity. I saw firsthand the ability of love and desire to manifest our desires via our conversations and the accomplishment of our goals. When our conversation came to an end, I had to return to Earth. When I woke up, my body hurt so badly. The fact that the doctors and nurses wouldn't give me medicine truly infuriated me. I got upset and chastised them for not being able to ease my pain, but they defended their choice not to give me medicine, which simply made me angrier. So I said that I wanted to go again. I find more appeal in that pleasant attitude and way of living. I would rather go back to the spirits instead. Another heart attack resulted from the realization that I was killing myself, if only in my thoughts. It was destroying me, myself. Trying to put out the roaring inferno that is my own self was a suicide on my behalf. The second heart attack came on suddenly. The meeting was less strained this time. The tone was instructive, more along the lines of, You know what I told you. Do you want me to kindly remind you? Do you want me to say it again? It appears to be just what I was searching for. I came back because I felt at ease and in love again. Since then, I had attempted to trick myself. I make an effort to be true to myself and to discover as much as I can about who I am. Despite what some people think, I am happy and living. I have seen a brilliant white face with long hair and eyes. I can see why I had that impression. One of the things that the monster told me explained the reason for my visions. That immense, unconditional energy source is love itself. Someone will always find a way to show you that they adore you. My upbringing as a Catholic, inside the confines of the Catholic faith, influenced my initial perception of that energy. We are able to relate to whatever is going on in front of us. When we match, my subconscious begins to believe things like, oh, this must be God because I'm dead, or this must be the all-powerful energy. I felt an all-knowing, peaceful, smart, and compassionate presence. Even though I hadn't attended the Catholic school in a while, my mind continued to transport me back to those times. It changes its shape so that we can be comfortable and able to communicate with the energy. It releases tension and enables us to concentrate on the other individual. People I spoke with who had similar experiences said that some others saw Buddha, some saw Jesus, and some saw other religious figures. The fact is that the same energy finds a way to connect with you. I do not know what your religious background is, but I can guarantee you that whatever it is you meet will make itself known in a way that promotes understanding between us. The lights instantly went out, and I saw what's known as the tunnel. I was so out of energy that when I left this world, I landed on the floor. My soul and spirit left my body because my heart was not beating. My own cells and meat were the same composition as the bricks, sand, and trees of the edifice. It appeared as though everything was moving, like a web of connected cells. An individual's energy cells contain their soul. The spirit and energy are its basic pieces, and everything in the complex system is alive and interrelated. As I flew away, I started to separate from it and the globe, which contracted to the size of a tiny dot.
and then there was silence throughout the whole scenario. The light in the distance was so beautiful that I started to go toward it. As I got closer to the light, I realized a very important lesson. I had been really depressed and had taken my own life. The day we get to make the decision is tomorrow. We are always faced with choices and decisions in our lives. All we need to do is have faith in our decision-making abilities every second. Humanity will have to deal with whatever we can imagine for the future. The future is always changeable, and you can make changes to it at any time. Imagine a world without chaos and conflict, one of prosperity and tranquility. Before you even open your eyes, picture your perfect tomorrow. You possess immense strength. Many individuals are unaware that thoughts are the source of an energy flow, and that imagination is what sustains that flow. As a species, we have an obligation to envision the world in which we exist. We must picture a future in which there is an abundance of food, clean rivers, oceans teeming with fish, wonderful relationships, exquisite art, cutting-edge technology, fascinating research, fascinating friends, and anything else we could possibly want. The world we live in today shapes the world we live in tomorrow.